Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to the ongoing Game Dev Toolbox series. A look at the essential tools, be it for artists, the sound guys, the programmers, uh, or the designers on the team. Uh, we're looking at all of them, but today we're looking at an artist tool that you've probably heard of, and I'm probably a little late to include, Blender. Now, Blender is a open source, free 3D modeling and content creation application. It's been around for a very, very long time. Uh, as I said, to start things off, it is free and open source. It's released under the GPL license and you can grab it at blender.org. Any of the links I give today, I will have available down below. Now, Blender started off way back um, as an in-house tool for a company called Neo Geo. No, not that Neo Geo, completely unrelated. And um, that company ultimately went bankrupt and it was bought out by a company called NAN, N-A-N, or Not A Number Technologies, who in turn also went under eventually. Um, and they had released Blender as shareware for some period of time. Uh, towards the end of their life, basically, once that company died, uh, in 2002, there was probably the first ever software-based crowd um, funding campaign ever. And they were trying to raise $100,000 to release the source code and maintain the source code for Blender. And that started the Blender Foundation, which is going strong today. So that was back in 2002. And that was for $100,000, which, uh, you know, by Kickstarter standards is a paltry, paltry amount. Uh, but that's what kicked off Blender. Now, Blender has had a reputation for many years as being a very difficult to use piece of software. And let me address this in two points. First off, yes, it is a difficult to use piece of software. All of these programs are. The amount of stuff that programs like Blender, 3D Studios Max, Softimage, um, Maya, Modo, etc., they just do so much. These are basically careers. So yes, they are hard to use. But Blender used to be very obtuse. The interface used to be ah, ugly and very keyboard. You used to have to remember like 9,000 keyboard shortcuts. So it does have a reputation as being a very impenetrable program, but this is definitely proved in time. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about Blender. I've actually covered Blender extensively on Game From Scratch. If you want, there is a playlist of tutorials, including a complete hour-by-hour -hour, um, introduction to Blender, about five hours in length, that will teach you pretty much everything you need to know to get started. Or if text is your preference, I've also got a complete, and this is 20-ish parts, text-based tutorial series that will teach you basically how to create and animate this model right here. Uh, so I'm not gonna really go into the details about what Blender can do, but I will link both of these tutorials and the Blender download link down below. So now, as I said, Blender is completely free and released under the GPL. This is Blender itself. You can see it right here in environment. Here's where you do your editing. Um, now, what you'll probably find shocking with Blender is just how customizable it is. This window at the side, it can disappear. This one over here, it can disappear. If you get to know the keyboard shortcuts, it's very fast to use this software. And at the same time, any window can be dragged into and collapsed with any other window. This is an amazingly customizable piece of software. For example, that one's now gone. Uh, drag this over. That one's now gone and we just got one big window. Uh, we can come up here and switch between the different modes very quickly. Now, what you're seeing here is mostly the modeling side of things. This is Blender as a 3D modeler. You work in polygons, edge loops, etc. And in this day and age, to be honest, functionality wise, all three of the big packages out there, um, being Blender, Maya, and Max, all have close to feature parity. They can all do basically the same things. They do it in a different way, but we are really kind of getting to the point where it comes down to preference as opposed to tool set or features that are there. The industry has matured to such a point that you can kind of do anything in any of those three packages. Um, now, there are, of course, strengths and weaknesses to all of them, and a lot of those strengths and weaknesses also come down to personal opinion. Now, what I want you to be aware of, though, this is not a 3D modeling package only. Blender can do so much more. Uh, for example, here you can see animation in effect. So you can got your timelines. I've actually got a small animation on this ship that I'll show you there. So you can see over time, there is the different keys in the F curve controlling this particular animation. Uh, you can see all the different keyframes here. So we can switch between, there's all these different views. So it's used for um, animators. Then there's on top of that, we get into compositing. 
Now, compositing is where you can basically bring together different things, sound effects, movies, uh, animations, uh, overlays, static images, etc. So Blender has a complete compositing package in there. In fact, Blender is a complete non-linear editing solution. And there's only about 12 or 14 of those out there. And Blender actually happens to be one. Now, on the other hand, Blender is also somewhat crashy. Um, when it comes to nonlinear editing. So if you're looking for a video editor, Blender's probably not your first choice, but it is actually capable of taking, you know, various video clips, static images, etc., and rendering them out to a movie. And you can render out to just about any kind of format you want with Blender. You can see right here, all different images and uh, different still frames, different kinds of video formats, etc. So any kind of output you can expect is probably supported. In terms of rendering, there are two built-in renderers. There's the built-in standard Blender renderer, and there's a new one called Cycles, which uses a node-based shader approach. Uh, on top of, so we've got video editing, we've got animation, we've got modeling, we have uh, UV mapping, texturing, and then weirdly enough, there's actually a full game editor built into um, Blender, not even only a game editor, a game engine. Um, so you can actually use Blender to create games. Now Blender has a full scripting host built in of Python. Um, I actually am not a huge fan of the game editor. It's been kind of de-emphasized and I wouldn't be surprised if it went away, but I figured I'd be thorough in letting you know that it's actually there. So if you wanted to create games directly inside of Blender, that is your option. Uh, the other thing, again, there is scripting. There is uh, motion tracking. I think I missed though. It's, it's just a full and complete package. So if you need to create models and texture them and then just export them out to a game engine, that is your option in Blender. It supports the most popular formats, uh, including DAE and Collada. So you can use it in just about any pipeline you want. Now, sometimes those exporters aren't perfect. Uh, so it's one of those things to be aware of. When you're dealing with, uh, say, um, sorry, DAE or film box file format, well, Autodesk owns that. So Autodesk products work the best that way. However, at the end of the day, you can use Blender to work with most game engines now. Uh, you can directly work with Unity. You can drop your assets as blend files directly into Unity and Unity will import them correctly. Uh, most other game engines support either DAE, FBX, or OBJ formats, all of which are supported by Blender. So in terms of an artist pipeline, it can fit in for game dev, no problems at all. Uh, the other thing is it's actually been used for making a couple of commercial games. The information on exactly how many, I'm not sure of, but I know for a fact, for example, Telltale Games has used it. Um, one of their lead artists uses it for uh, Lego City Undercover or Lego Marvel, I believe it was. So it is being used in large game studios as well, but it's not as common. Definitely Max and Maya are the entrenched norms. And the truth of the matter is in the last two or three, possibly four years, Blender has improved a staggering amount. And before that, people used it because it was free. These days, that's not the only reason to use Blender, which is more and more impressive. Now it's pushing smaller players out of the market. There were a bunch of people that made, you know, one to $500 cost um, 3D modeling tools, things like Silo, Cheetah, etc., cetera, True Space, and, and more. And Blender has kind of ticked all of those boxes for sure. And it's definitely gunning for the big boys now. So um, it's interesting to see what the future holds. If you've dismissed Blender in the past because it was too hard to work with or because it was missing some features, definitely be sure to give it another look it has gotten easier to use but there is for sure a learning curve um, they've done some things to make life nicer for you um, for example you've got a spacebar menu uh, that brings up the um, uh, quick events that you can then search for so if you wanted to find say bevel you can search in here and actually I'm not in edit mode, so you're not gonna get it, but um, there's control E, control F, and control V for face, edge, and vertex menus. For example, I go into edit mode here and control F, it'll pop up all the different face options. It makes things much more clean. And then here in the tools, we now have uh, tabbed by their actual type um, structure in here. So the UI is definitely getting much, much, much cleaner. And then on top of that, we also have the W menu, which is a quick shot to some of the most commonly uh, done um, modeling tasks for the particular task you're working with. So usability has definitely been an area they have focused on and it is paying uh, dividends for sure. And once you do get the keyboard shortcuts down, you will come to appreciate the workflow a whole lot more. To be honest, and I've worked with Max Maya and a number of other tools over the years, 
And nowadays, I actually prefer the workflow in Blender, uh, especially over Max and Maya as they stand now. Uh, again, that's probably more familiarity. I'm working with Blender a lot more. But in time, you don't find yourself missing features from the other packages. Like I said earlier, there's pretty close to feature parity between all of these different packages now. So it comes down to personal preference. And if you give Blender a little bit of time, it will grow on you, trust me. Or you'll grow to hate it, and then in that case, hey, you're luck in luck. There's tons of other choices out there. Um, so again, this is just a quick overview of Blender. I'm not going to go into details of what it does because I've done these two very well. I've done this very extensive text tutorial series, and then a whole series of videos already on my channel. So I will link this playlist and I link that tutorial down below. Again, if you enjoyed this, please click like. If you like more material like this, uh, please click subscribe. Blah blah. Click subscribe, please, and I will continue to make this kind of stuff, game reviews, uh, tutorials, and more. So hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Bye.